What's up, Central Illinois? You know what you all need? Y'all need some CIBL podcast swag. And thanks to our newest sponsor, Jedco Sales, you can now find our swag at CIBLmerch.com. You can find t-shirts, sweatshirts, polos, hats, and more, all classically adorned with our famous CIBL podcast logo. If you want to represent and support your favorite podcast, check out CIBLmerch.com. That's C-I-B-L-M-E-R-C-H.com. If you like our store, you can also build your very own business swag store with the help of Jedco Sales in Effingham, Illinois. Jedco is owned by previous CIBL guests, Andrew and Laren Dial. They've set up a special discount offer for CIBL guests and listeners to set up your very own custom branded swag store. You can now offer branded apparel to your employees, customers, and fans, and Jedco will fulfill all the orders for you. Contact Jedco at sales at jedcosales.com. That's sales at J-E-D-C-O sales.com. And tell them that Garrett and Derek sent you. Let Jedco help you get noticed. Welcome to the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, where business owners, thought leaders, and community champions from across Central Illinois come to share their story. The Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. Anything less would be uncivilized. What's up, Central Illinois? I'm Derek Hayden. I'm here with Garrett Ulmer. We are your hosts for the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast, powered by Zambu. Zambu is a delicious grapefruit or wildberry vodka based spirit infused with a Brazilian buzz button. It's smooth, tasty, and leaves you with a signature tingle. Learn more at zambuliquors.com. Zambu, taste the tingle. All right, Central Illinois. Today's guest is from Oxygen Plus Leadership, and he's got a little bit of a background here in Central Illinois as well. Ladies and gents of Central Illinois, please welcome Stan Gibson. How are you doing, Stan? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks, Derek and uh, Garrett. I'm really excited to be on. I circled this one uh, about two or three months ago. As you said, Central Illinois is uh, where I grew up. And uh, so I've, I've got a special place for uh, for that part of the country. So uh, I'm excited to be on. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. We're, we're excited to hear your story and dig into it. But before we do that, Stan, we've got three really difficult questions that we're going to ask just to get to know you a little bit better if you are ready. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, I, I want you to remember, I went to Eastern Illinois, so make these very simple, okay? Because I, you know, I've, uh, yeah, I, I passed, but I won't say that I was a magna cum laude or anything like that, so let, let's get after it. Perfect, we'll do it. All right, Stan, first question. If you were going to live on a desert island and you could only take one thing with you, what would that one thing be? Well, gosh, I'll get uh, kicked upside the head if I don't say my wife. So, uh, you know, <laughs> she, uh, she, 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 uh, like me, she grew up uh, in Paxton, Illinois, which is uh, just down the road from you. We've both known each other since third grade. So if I take off without her, um, I'm probably not coming back anywhere. So, uh, and, and I would even without prompting. Yeah, she's my best friend. So we've been married for 42 years. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hauling awesome. my wife and I know she'd do the same thing. Very good. Very good. All right, Garrett, I'll ask you the same question. If you were going to a desert island but can only take one thing, what would that one thing be? Well, I can't let Stan upstage me here, so I've <laughs> got to say my wife, right? You know, well, man. We'll say, that's a given. Nice. We'll, we'll say that's a given, Garrett. So go ahead. You've got one more uh, lifeline here. <laughs> there, there, you, there you go. I guess if I had to take something else – Along with my wife, I, I would I think we'd have to just say some type of technology at this point, just to be able to stay in contact with people and, and be able to see what's going on around us. I'm there you go. That. There you go. Well, good deal. All right. Second question. Uh, Stan, you're first up on this one as well. What famous person, dead or alive, would you like to have dinner with and why? Oh, boy. There are so many people I'm so fascinated with. You know, maybe as we talk a little bit, I will say that uh, faith is a big part of my uh, my journey, uh -huh. um, straightened me out from time to time. So, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, I'm always one that uh, I take a, you know, spend the first hour every morning, you know, thinking about my faith and talking to, you know, Jesus. So I would say that, you know what, I would just love, because I got so many questions that are just unanswered about life. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I'd probably sit down from Jesus and, Jesus and just say, you got to let me in on these secrets. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I mean, there, uh -huh. there's just a lot of cool things that, 
that you've done, but a lot of things that I can't get my arms around. So, you know, I would say, you know, that's an easy one for me, but, you know, uh, yeah, there, there, there's so many leaders. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I don't want to belong, but even, even, I don't know if you, uh, Warren Buffett, you know, Charlie Monger, yeah. Charlie just passed away at 99. What a, oh my God, I, I can't read enough about that guy. Uh-huh. And I would have just loved to have just hung around that guy and yeah. just absorbed everything that he read, everything that he embodied. He was unfiltered. So I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to say Charlie Monger would be another one. I'd love to have, to have had dinner with him when he was alive. Very cool. Very cool. Well, Garrett. It's another tough one to follow up. Gee whiz, can one. you just let Stan answer these? And I'm going to stay in the background, um, you know, as far as that goes. I don't, how do you even top that? You know, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, on the business side, you know, the kid side of me, you know, I grew up like in Michael Jordan. So I'd love to be able to sit down and have dinner with him to, you know, just hear about, you know, all the stuff that he has done. But business wise, you know, a guy that I like to follow is Mark Cuban. Um, I would mm. like to sit down with Mark Cuban. He's another one of those guys that's just, he kind of lives and, and does what he needs to do and what he thinks is right and an extremely smart businessman i know he's a little radical sometimes but uh, he gets after so i'd say mark cuban and michael jordan there that's a great answer that is good I- i'm gonna answer this one too i know it's my own question <laughs> but i the reason i picked this one is i've been asked it before and my answer is chris farley yeah um, so he-, he wasn't necessarily i want to say a leader and he had some pretty bad issues obviously but um the- his ability to make people laugh was incredible um, and just, I've, I've written several, uh, uh, papers in high school and in college about Chris Farley. And I got a pluses on both because I just enjoyed <laughs> researching his life and all that stuff. And, uh, so I'd say Chris Farley for sure, just to, just to be able to laugh. Yeah. It, it's so funny. I watched one of his YouTubes last night. It just randomly came across and yeah, uh-huh. you're right. I just, you know, down by the river. I mean, the guy. Just, <laughs> See, it makes you just laugh saying that, right? It, yeah. it, it does. It does. So, it, great. Another great answer. I wouldn't. I would have never guessed that, but that is a great answer. <laughs> well, good deal. All right, last question, and I'll Garrett. You will go first on this one. This one's a little more business slash personal development. So, Garrett, what do you feel you are not good at that you would like to improve upon? That is so funny because uh, just a few days ago, I'm I'm behind schedule of kind of writing down some goals of self improvement and business improvement for this year, and I would say controlling my emotions is something that I am is a goal of 2024. Uh, I'll give kudos to Derek. When we're in heightened situations, Derek can always be the one I can look at that's got the glass face, never seems ruffled. I'm always envious of you for that, Derek. So that is one thing I am going to work on self improvement this year's learning how to control your emotions through the good and the bad and, and, and being able to hang with it. So that's, that's my answer for that one. There we go. Cool. Stan, how about you? Now I get to be the one that can't top the answer. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I, in fact, I just did a post on LinkedIn right before the holidays. And I said, uh, you know, I, I always I kind of tell my clients not to get too enthralled with the new year's resolutions. They just, you know, they kind of come and go, but I said, you know, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think, about a movie and you're the director and you're also the leading actor or actress. And I want you to just visualize this movie. And there's one word that's gonna drive the script. And what is that one word? And so, you know, I asked a lot of listeners, I asked a lot of my clients that, but you know, my word was fearlessness. And um, it's one of those things that, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. And, you know, I often tell, again, a lot of my clients, they say that, uh, you know, um, you know, success doesn't, uh, live in the land of, of comfort yeah. and and mm-hmm. so 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 to get outside and to do things to act to not overthink and to let what i'm a big science neuro neurological guy so to not let the amygdala you know the part of the brain that's fight or flight not to not let things talk you out of things that's mine for 2024 is to just be fearless to just do and uh you know what we can uh, course correct down the road but um that would be mine. I think is just being fearless, more fearless in, in, in what I've done and what I want to do. All right, Derek. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask you. Okay. So yep. you're on the spot now. All right. Well, the one thing that I am terrible at that I would like to get better at is organization. I'm, my mind works very, I have, I'm kind of the 
the squirrel guy, the squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel. And um, I'm not good at staying on task and staying focused and organized with my agenda for the day. And by the end of the day, I'm like, well, I was supposed to get this and this done. And I didn't do either of those. So that would be my um, number one thing to work on is staying focused and organized. There you go. All Great. right. Well, Stan, this is your moment to, uh, we're going to give you the microphone. You tell us your story. Um, tell us your background. Um, take us as far back as you'd like. Bring us up to speed of what you got going on today and anything between you want to share. <clears throat> Boy, that's, uh, that's a lot to cover. And I'll try to be as succinct as I can. Um, hey, and thanks, thanks for having me on. This is really special for yeah, me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, I, as I mentioned, uh, my wife and I both grew up uh, in central Illinois. We grew up in Paxton and known each other since third grade, been married for 42 years. And so, you know, it's kind of a special story. And, uh, you know, played all the sports, loved central Illinois. And in fact, uh, when I got to the end of my high school career, I, you know, had some success and decided I wanted to uh, go on and play football. And uh, so, you know, I was recruited and was what's called the preferred walk on at uh, Eastern Illinois, which means you get to work just as hard as everybody else. You're just not getting your education paid for. <laughs> um, but, you know, moved on to there. And uh, the reason I mentioned that story about Eastern Illinois is because it is pretty special. Because when I went there as a freshman, I was just sure this team was just going to rock. I mean, you know, I was, you know, when I was recruited, the guy that uh, hosted me was, uh, you know, third round draft pick by the Steelers. And, you know, you get excited when you're a kid from central Illinois and you start to see people like that. And I just knew this was going to be a tremendous program. And, you know, lo and behold, they show up my freshman year and, you know, they lose their first game, their second game, their third game. Oh my God, you know, they're winless. And they win the final game of the year. They go one in 10. And you think, my God, what did I do? And uh, <laughs> so, you know, you don't keep your, you don't keep your job as a football coach when you go one and 10. So they, you know, they dismissed him and they brought in a new coach named Daryl Mudra, who is also known as Dr. Victory. And, you know, the, the unique thing, of, the reason I'm telling this story is because it shaped a lot of my business philosophies. And, you know, to kind of get to the punchline, we went to one and you know, we were one and 10 my freshman year. Well, the first year that uh, Dr. Victory or Daryl Mudra came in, we won the national championship. I mean, from worst to first. Mm -hmm. That's a story that's hard to yeah. uh, hard to duplicate. You can't make yeah. that up. And I remember when Daryl walked in, I remember, you know, the team was all surrounded. We got to meet him for the first time and he was this disheveled guy. And I'll date many of you he, that probably have never seen Columbo, you know, the, the old detective. And if you haven't seen that, you've, you've, you've got to go on Netflix and watch Columbo because because he was a detective that, you know, he, he, he was you thought he was the kind of the dumbest guy in the room. And he turned out to be the smartest. And, and, and that's kind of what, you know, when Daryl walked in, he kind of looked like him. And he was very honest. He said, you know what, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. He said, I know very little about football. And, you know, when you're coming off a one in 10 team, you know, you don't want to hear your new head coach. Down, no <laughs> yeah. about football. And he said, in fact, I'm going to be coaching from the press box because I can see better from up there. And I really, you know, I, I rely on my, my, my assistant coaches. And so, you know, I, I, I'm going to be up there. I'm just going to make sure you guys get fed. And you get to the bus on time. And, you know, you're, you're a practice. And he obviously did more than that. But you know what he was doing? He was showing his authenticity and mm -hmm. he was just being real with us. And, you know, he wasn't trying to be somebody he wasn't. And when I work with a lot of clients, we work on that authenticity. We work on knowing your swim lane, know who you are, know who you're not, leverage the other swim lanes. And, um, you know, lo and behold, you know, he hires a coaching staff. And, you know, one of the guys that he, that he hired, he, everybody was you know, phenomenal, but one of the guys he hired, he just played at Eastern Illinois just three years earlier. Wow. And he became our offensive coordinator as Mike Shanahan. Uh -huh. And, you know, if you know football, Mike's got three Super Bowl rings. And uh, so, you know, he comes in and, you know, heck, he went to classes with a lot of these guys. And, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, we had, we had he, he did, he just hired good people. And that was kind of the second business philosophy was not only be authentic, but, you know, surround yourself with really talented people, surround yourself with the best. I often work with a lot of clients on, uh, you know, making sure that they've got their own board of directors. You know, you start to think about companies that, you know, are billion dollar companies and they hire the brightest and smartest people to come in and tell them what they don't want to hear. Um, they've got to be authentic and they got to be real. And we as leaders have to have the same thing. We have to have our own board of directors. And I mean, that's everywhere from your doctors to your the financial analyst to, uh, you know, everybody that plays a key role in your life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was kind of the, the, you know, the next piece. And, and then the third thing he said was, he said, you know, while, while I'm going to be up in the press box and I guess some good coaches on the sidelines, he said, each of you out there, he said, you know, you're the 
you're the coaches. You're you're playing. You're out on the field. You know if you're getting your butt whooped. You know if you're whooping the guy across from you. Mm-hmm. He said, if you don't relate that information to us, we don't know how to make uh, you know in-game adjustments. And how many organizations today actually do that? You know, yeah. strategies are set, you know, within the leadership group, and then employees are expected to go ahead and to execute. How much more effective would you be? And then I teach a lot when I go into companies and consult and coach. I work on what's called people-centric uh, coaching and people-centric cultures. How much more valuable would you be if you actually had input from those that are, you know, the day-to-day soldiers, the ones that are executing, the ones that kind of know what's selling, what's not selling, how how products are are, are being marketed, et cetera, et cetera. And so just that ability to to you know, tell us more about, hey, we're really the ones that can, you know, kind of influence the game. That was a really key piece, I think. And so, so you know, I played for two years. And um, the reason I didn't play for a third year was because, uh, you know, they moved me to uh, offensive linemen. And, you know, even though I, you know, was able to get up to around 240 pounds, I needed to be around 280. And I realized I wasn't going to be playing on Sundays, let alone Saturdays. <laughs> and so um, I got asked to be um, an assistant head coach, actually, uh, my junior Ooh. and senior year for high wow. school. And I was an assistant head coach. For those of you, the local uh, around that uh, Shelbyville area, you probably know Cumberland. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yep. uh, so I was uh, I was assistant head coach for Cumberland uh, for two years. And it was the same thing. I walked in a uh, week before the first game. They were playing Robinson and uh, Robinson was ranked in the top 10 in the state. Robinson uh, squeaked out a victory uh, 89 to six. And, 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 <laughs> and, 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 you know, I always say I'm not I, I don't know which I'm more surprised at the fact that they scored 89 and the fact that we actually scored six. I mean, it was just, <laughs> <laughs> But using a lot of those same principles from Daryl Mudra, and fortunately we had juniors that would become seniors, but you know, you know, giving them a lot of the autonomy, a lot of the ability to get better, letting them make decisions, uh, you know, throwing uh, a new mindset and some new uniforms on them. You know, we played the same team a year later and lost six to nothing. And while we lost, you could just see the growth. Sure. And so I would say that that's had a lot of transformational uh, impact on my coaching, on my consulting, um, you know, I moved on from college, moved to Dallas, and uh, then later on to uh, Des Moines, Iowa, where my wife and I lived for 30 years. Uh, we're now in uh, the Scottsdale area. But I would tell you that, uh, you know, my professional career was really impacted by those years at Eastern Illinois. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I, uh, you know, I worked for, uh, you know, uh, Principal Financial Group, which is a large insurance company. Mm-hmm. I worked for Wells mm-hmm. Fargo and had a team that, uh, you know, we did the, you uh, we did the real estate strategy globally. And uh, so, you know, I was, you know, I was in both the, you know, the corporate world and I also did some entrepreneurial uh, things along the way that I absolutely loved. And about two to three years ago, I decided to uh, jump out of the corporate world and take, uh, take, you know, all the knowledge that, you know, I was blessed to have been given and start working with executives, start working mm-hmm. with companies, start working with small and mid cap companies to to provide leadership training and leadership development and helping them, you know, revise and devise the culture that I think is going to be important going forward. I think what's worked in the past literally isn't going to work, isn't going to work going forward. And, you yeah. know, I work with yeah. a lot of Gen Zs. I work with a lot of millennials. I just love working with younger people. I mean, that's the future. Mm-hmm. And if you're not setting up businesses to to be able to to inspire them. And, and, and one thing, in fact, I just wrote a blog yesterday about you know, Gen Zs. Uh, a lot of them are my peers. I mean, these are people in their 20s, kids, mm-hmm. you know. But I'll tell you what, they own businesses. Many of them own businesses in high school. Yeah. And yeah. they're my peers. Um, you know, they're calling me for advice. I'm calling them for advice. And so setting up organizations that are really kind of forward thinking and people-centric is really kind of what... Uh, what really excites me. I wrote a book called Living a Rich and Intentional Life, um, Never Let a Good Pandemic Go to Waste. I had uh, I had used that year because it was a little slow to, to write a book about business and about all of the neurological and physiological science around how leaders perform at their best, all the way from, you know, what's the science around sleep, nutrition, uh, exercise, um, and to your point, uh, Derek, you know, how about productivity? You know, what it's all the science in getting, you know, four hours uh, uh, of work, of good solid work out of an eight hour day. 
how do you get the most and be able to live, you know, a semi-balanced lifestyle? So anyway, those are a little bit of the things that, uh, you know, that, that I've done. I enjoy working with companies. I enjoy working with leaders. And so let me stop right there and, um, you know, throw it back to you with any questions you might have. But, uh, um, you know, I did just uh, change the name of my company, actually, um, from Oxygen Plus. Uh, last week, I sent an announcement out because uh, I have a newsletter and uh, um website and I, I just changed it from uh, oxygen plus to stan gibson speaks.com and one of the reasons i did that is because i do a lot of uh, that's really what i do i do a lot of motivational speaking i do a lot of speaking on leadership development i come into corporate uh, environments and speak with uh, their leaders and and, and, and i do uh, all kinds of speaking and that's what I, that's my jam that's what i love to do first and foremost and from there there's always a lot of people and a lot of opportunities that come up from that so stan gibson speaks is kind of what i'm doing now and uh you know probably setting up 2024 for a lot more speaking uh opportunities cool. nice cool hey central illinois professionals do you know where people go to learn more about you they typically either go to your about us section of your website or your LinkedIn profile. And guess what the first impression is that they see? That's right. It is your professional headshot. Your headshot is part of your brand. Your brand should proudly show the world how passionate you are about delivering quality products and services to your customers. At Studio 21, you won't get the boring old headshots that everyone else has. When you get photos with Melissa Harden at Studio 21, your headshots will show off your strength, confidence, and approachability. To book a professional headshot appointment for you and your team, call Melissa at 217-962-0048 or visit www.melissamharden.com. That's M-E-L-I-S-S-A-M-H-A-R-D-E-N.com. And let Melissa at Studio 21 help you stand out from the crowd. I know there's people listening that, you know, the concept you talked about your coach where he coached from the press box and allowed uh, the the managers or the coaches to do the coaching on the field. He was the one that organized everything and then allowed people who, who had special talents to do what they do best, be the coaches. And I know, I think there's probably a disconnect with a lot of organizations where maybe the, the main leadership is in that press box, but there's no one on the field coaching. Do you, do you find that a lot, Stan, where there's there's people in the press box, but they're just kind of letting the players play without a whole lot of direction? Yeah, absolutely. I'm working with a company right now, actually out of Chicago. It's kind of the same thing. You know, uh, if you look at the, at the statistics, uh, Gallup, you know, they do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of surveys. But, you know, they say that 30 percent of your employees are are fully engaged uh, 50% are kind of middle of the road, take it or leave it. They're getting a good paycheck and 20%, you know, would just rather have a root canal than be working, you know, for your firm. <laughs> and, and, and so now I've, I do find that a lot. In fact, I just had a client, like I'm saying, uh, out of Chicago that, you know, just, you know, he said, you know, I'm just, I'm not sensing the engagement. I just sent this really heartfelt, uh, email, you know, where I want this company to go. And, uh, and, and, you know, the, once I read it, it was a great, great email it's a great but you know my response back quite honestly was you know you can't uh, you can't just expect employees to turn and flip the switch overnight if you're not building a culture of trust if you're not building a culture where they're they're you know you're, you're engaged and, and what i mean by that when i've had meetings with this company it's been one or two people from you know the top of the ranks and oftentimes i've said you know we need to bring more people in and get their fingerprints on what the strategy looks like and i and, 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 and i think you know this this person knows this now but i'm finding a lot of companies they are really good at figuring out what they want to do and then just dis disseminating that information and the employees on the other hand are saying what's in this for me how do i make a difference and I feel that that's what most employees don't know is how am I, my job specifically, how am I, you know, uh, you know, what am I doing that's helping that return on investment? What am I doing that is is, is reaching that specific metric? And a lot of people just don't know. And when they know, they, they, they all of a sudden they start to say, oh, I see where I can make a difference. So to your point, no, I've, a lot of companies out there like this and they're going to have to change. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I would, I would agree. And I mean, similar story to that is I was very young, um, prior to insurance, I was in the car business for a long time and I was promoted to a managerial position and 
you know, I was younger than a lot of my peers at that point. And a major struggle for me at the beginning was, is it was hard for me to understand. Not everybody has the same motivation that you do. So to get employees on board or to get new people to buy into what you're doing, how do you, everybody's different, right? It's kind of like sports and coaching. You, you can't just force everybody, the team to do things the same way. You've got to understand what everybody's drive is. And I would say that was one of my biggest things to overcome at first is when you walk in here, why aren't you motivated? I am. Why are, you know, why yeah, are you great not? Point. So it, great it was point. very hard to learn early on, you know, of how to understand what everybody was looking for and what they needed from you as, as, as a, you know, a leader as well. It's a great point. Great point. I, I couldn't say that any, any, any better. Um, yeah. Uh, again, everybody just has to know what's in it. It isn't in a, in a, in a, in a harsh way of saying what's in it for me. It's just in a yeah. way of why do I show up for work? Why am I, you know, what is it that I'm doing that's contributing? And I think when people know how they contribute, I just think that they get an extra pep in their step and, you know, they feel like, uh, you know, the, the turnover is such a big issue today too. Um, yeah. My goodness. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what's worse than turnover uh, guys is people that stay that aren't engaged. That's worse yeah. than turnover. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So getting that engagement is really, really important. And I know that, you know, from my standpoint, you know, in my leadership days, um, you know, I had a specific cadence and, you know, anybody that reported to me, you know, my direct reports, I li- they were on my calendar. I mean, it was, it, it was, you know, every two weeks, you know, we scheduled, you know, 45 minutes. And I'll tell you what, the first 10 to 15 minutes was just, hey, what's going on in life? You know, how the kids join mm-hmm. with this, what's that? Yeah. You know, getting to that personal side for the first 10 to 15 minutes. And then we got into what I call coaching. And in and to me, this is another big piece of, you know, when I work with a lot of executives and I work with clients, is you you got to your position because you were typically really good at it. Mm-hmm. And you now have the answers. And when people come to you, they want the answers. And that's not leading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I have a saying that I say, you know, when leaders learn to coach, employees learn to lead. And so teaching leaders how to coach, how to ask questions, you know the answer. Mm-hmm. But when you start to listen and you start to refrain, and there are specific questions that, you know, I believe are, are very impactful. And, and when you start to, to extract out the information from, you know, the person coming to you, you know, so what are two things that you're thinking about that uh, would help the situation when you, when you throw it back on them like that, and you start to kind of, it, it might seem like, you know what, we're too busy for that. I will guarantee you, you spend that time up front doing that. Somebody will start to think logically on their own and they will be a much better employee and you'll get more results down the road. So I believe in having those meetings set up on the calendar. And I will tell you, people that were two or three down from me, you know, in the, in the pecking order, I had them on the calendar. It might be every six weeks. It might be every eight weeks. But mm-hmm. I believe in that communication. And that's what creates and causes engagement is when when they know how much you care. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. One of the things that um, it looks like you really uh, like to talk about is, leading a rich and intentional life, whether it's at work or at home. Tell us a little bit about how you blend the work leadership into having a good, uh, you know, a solid uh, home life as well. Yeah. Well, I believe it's important and I'll ask your listeners and I'll ask you too, you know, when, when things aren't going really well at home, it carries over into work. And Mm -hmm. when things aren't going really well at work, it carries over at home. Mm -hmm. So getting both of those right is really important. And, you know, I've got several clients that I've got one, for example, that, uh, you know, she really wanted to, you know, to up her game for, as, a, as a leader. <clears throat> and, you know, she works for a you know Fortune 250 and she's got a lot of responsibility. She travels. And, you know, the first thing we, we figured out was, you know, she's not, she's not doing well at home. She's not doing well personally. Mm-hmm. And it's carrying over into work. And so we started talking real quickly about, you know, routines. And that's a big part of my book is, routines? Do you have the right morning routines? Do you have the right evening routines? You know, tomorrow starts tonight. You know, you've got to start thinking tonight about tomorrow. But, you know, we started talking about the fact that, you know, uh, she, uh, you know, has horrible evening habits and, you know, a lot of stress, takes a few drinks and, 
and you know thinks that that's going to calm calm her down, and it actually uh, ruins uh, you know the circadian rhythm of of, of the, the the essential stages of sleep, specifically deep sleep, which which restores your your body and and REM or or you know it's the dream state that that restores your brain function. So she was losing out on this, having poor sleep. And then waking up and turning on the TV and watching a lot of killings and this and that are going on. So, you know, her mindset is already, and then she's on the email. And then of course, you know, got to get the kids ready before she goes off to work. And, you know, they're having donuts and all of a sudden, you know, there's this major crash around 10 o'clock that you just don't recover from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we started talking about morning routines, you know, how to, you know, how to spend that first hour of the morning. Um, you know, I call it mind, body, and soul you know, trying to get, you know, yourself right so that you can be a little selfish the first hour of the morning so you can be very selfless the rest of the day. Because once you take care of you and you double down on you, then you can become a servant leader. So I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, getting into uh, good rituals, good habits. We make over 35,000 decisions a day, and that's just on the average. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, um, if you don't take care of you first thing in the morning, you're going to run through those 35,000 decisions by two o'clock in the afternoon. And then mm -hmm. you're just going to, you know, you, you're, you're kind of worthless the rest of the day. So, you know, I have a, uh, I have a PDF if anybody is interested, but, uh, you know, it's a two page PDF on uh, the neuroscience and physiological, you know, aspects of sleep, nutrition, of, uh, of of how to be more productive, and it, it's it's you know if you want to go to my website, you know you're more than welcome to get a free copy. But you know StanGibsonSpeaks.com. But but that is really where I almost start working with leaders is getting their routines in place because once they're taking care of themselves, then they can become a servant leader the rest of the day, and that mm -hmm. carries over into work, and they start getting that balance. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. 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 Great sense. So if there's anybody, you've mentioned your, your website, stangibsonspeaks.com. If there's anybody that wants to learn more about, you know, maybe some of your speaking engagements, uh, leadership opportunities, uh, what's the best way that they can learn more about you? Yeah. Well, one thing I would uh, suggest is, like I said, I've got, uh, I've got a newsletter that comes out every Thursday and I, I uh, have two formats. Uh, I have one that comes out the first Thursday of the month and another format that comes out the next Thursday of the month. And so uh, if you want to uh, be a part of that, again, just go to mystandgibsonspeaks.com and there will be an opportunity to sign up. I don't know much about you know the marketing of it. I, I love writing these. And Monday's a, Monday is my content day because I'm really big into batching my days for certain functions. And, uh -huh. and so I love to write. And, and so you know I, I guess that you know when you put out a newsletter, a good what they call open rate when people actually open it is 10 to 15 percent so mine has averaged actually 45 to 50 percent since i put it out over a year and awesome. a half ago so i don't know what wow. i'm doing right but i know that i enjoy the writing aspect because it talks about the different it'll talk a little bit and again it's a two to three minute read i'm very mm -hmm. very uh uh considerate from the standpoint that we all get fed a lot of information and we mm -hmm. only have so much time but mine really is you know i'll, I'll have a uh, you know i'll have a uh uh, a well-being tip. I'll have uh, something I'm reading, something that I'm watching, a documentary, a book, because I love, love to read books. I'll have a leadership moment. So I'll incorporate, you know, those types of things into these two formats. And uh, again, that newsletter comes out uh, on Thursdays. And if, if you're if you're on that, then there's also a place to click on there, to where if you uh, do need a speaker, you need me to come in and talk to uh, you know your leadership team. If you need, uh, if you have a uh, you need a keynote for any organization that you belong to. Um, you know, it's an easy click on there uh, to go on there and just um, talk to me, and we'll see if we can make it happen. And I do a lot of that stuff virtually too, because I know that uh, you know some sometimes it's can you uh, do a Zoom like we're doing now as mm -hmm. opposed to coming in and uh, in speaking uh, speaking at a keynote. So that would be the best way to do it. Probably is through my website. Very cool. Wow, Very great. cool. So you mentioned. Uh, before we jump off here, Stan, you mentioned that reading is a big part of your your uh, mornings and your routines. One book or two books that you would recommend for anybody that's wanting to learn more about leadership? What are your favorites? You know, probably I always jump to the ones that I'm probably most fresh on my mind. <clears throat> um, I have been recommending a lot. Uh, 10X is easier than 2X uh, okay. by Benjamin Hardy. And the reason I like that book is because I think, you know, I read it uh, in the fall of last year and it really made me understand that I probably need to 
um, 20% 20 of my business, uh, I need to basically um, think about how, actually 80% of my clients I need to fire. I'll just put it more bluntly than that. 80% <laughs> of my my clients I, I, I need to fire. And because the 20% is where you need to, 10X is actually easier than 2X. When you think about 2Xing or doubling, you have about 15 things you want to do to 2X. When you think about 10Xing, you can't mm -hmm. be doing all those 15 things. You have to actually get more streamlined and you can only do four or five bigger things to get to a 10X. Mm -hmm. So 10X is a lot easier than 2X. And that got me to thinking about all the things that I do that I need to, that aren't in my swim lane. I need to outsource. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, I, I, I need to work with other people that are more efficient with billing, more people that are more efficient with uh, scheduling. You know, that's not my jam. I'm big into self-awareness and I'm really good at connecting people and connecting dots. And so that's one book that I would strongly recommend. Um, the second book is I kind of look around here. There's a book that just came out called Genius Spark. And it's, uh, I actually, uh, fortunate to be one of the people that got to, you know, write the little thing inside the cover as to, cool. uh, why I endorse it. But, but, uh, Rex Miller wrote, uh, the Genius Spark. And the reason I like that book is because it's all about self-awareness. And I am such a huge believer. In fact, I talked about, I take my clients through a lot of stuff as far as from a well-being perspective. But after that, the next uh, logical place is we talk about self-awareness. And uh, I don't know if you're a lover of strength finders or not, but uh, we mm -hmm. take strength finders and turn it upside down. And we actually go into a lot of de depth and detail on it. And, and, and I firmly believe that not only your self-awareness, but your team awareness. Once you start to know what everybody's swim lane is, all of a sudden magic starts to happen. And from those strengths that each of you have, the things that make you so awesome, under stress, they can also be your kryptonite. And so just having that awareness is really critical. So it's called The Genius Spark uh, by Rex Miller. So those would be two books uh, right off the top of my head that I would uh, recommend. And the third thing, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just say this yeah. real quick. Yeah. Go on. Uh, I, I strongly recommend that you uh, subscribe to Blinkist, and that's B L I N K. EST Blinkist and Blinkist is $80 a year. And basically they have probably four to 5,000 business books that um, are downloaded. You can either listen to them or you can read them in about 15 minutes. So they do all the cliff notes. And what I typically do is I go there and I read as many books as possible. And if it's something that I really like, then I'll go ahead and it actually, it, it allows you to click on it and buy it from Amazon. Okay. And uh, it cool. would also allow you to build your own library to where the two of you could have a library and share books back and forth. And so Blinkist oh, awesome. is, is a place where I start. And then I typically either get the audible version because I like to listen to books while I'm working out uh, or driving. Um, or I'll, if I really like it, I will get the hard copy because I want to dog ear it. So that's just something, a tip for, uh, for a lot of your uh, listeners is I, I, I'm a big uh, advocate of Blinkist. Wow. Awesome. Well, Derek, That's a I don't know about yep. you, but I'm, I'm ready to type through a wall right now. I know so. it. <laughs> I've taken some notes and I'm ready to do it. Awesome. Awesome, Stan. Appreciate all the information. Absolutely. For all you loyal listeners out there, make sure you're subscribing to the CIBL podcast on your favorite podcast platform. While you're there, please leave us a re review. It'd be greatly appreciated. Also, check out our merch store. It's CIBLmerch.com. Get yourself some branded shirts, hats, mugs, a bunch of cool stuff like that. You can also find us on social media, mainly LinkedIn and Facebook, and connect with Garrett and I there personally as well. Until next time, Stan, you've officially been civilized. Thanks for coming on the show with us. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, may you all live a rich and intentional life. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Central Illinois Business Leaders Podcast. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash CIBL podcast. You can also follow us on LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. It's the civilized thing to do. What's up, Central Illinois business owners? We know that insurance and employee benefits are one of the most expensive, confusing, and frustrating hurdles that you face in your business today. Garrett and I work with Central Illinois businesses to create insurance and risk management programs and employee benefit solutions that reduce risk, enhance your business, and maximize your profitability. 
Head to CIBLinsurance.com to learn more about insurance solutions that are specifically designed for your Central Illinois businesses and to watch our educational videos about work comp, employee health insurance, commercial insurance, and other insurance products to help your business go to the next level. Go to CIBLinsurance.com. We'll see you there.